Hello and welcome to the only podcast where we cry when we see calamari. I'm Matt. I'm Luke. And I'm Max. And this is Force for Thought. Alright, hello and welcome back everybody to Force for Thoughts, Food for Thought. That's really hard not to say the other way around. <laughs> Uh, today we figured we'd do a Thanksgiving-esque type episode. We're talking about all things uh, Star Wars food related. We're talking about all scenes, uh, not all scenes, but a lot of scenes that happen to feature food within the Star Wars universe. We'll also talk a little bit about what we would rather eat within those food scenes. And then also I wouldn't mind talking about the food at Galaxy's Edge for a little bit. Um, until we review it for our 100th episode, <laughs> which I keep saying and none of us, including myself, are really down to do yet. <laughs> We'll say episodes is coming up a lot quicker than I think we realize. We're only we just hit thirty. Um, this will date it a little bit, I guess. But yeah, that's that's so yeah, we're a third of the way some, there. Once we're ha- ha- once we're halfway, let's start talking twenty more episodes. Yeah, that's fair. Um, but I still think we're talking twenty twenty four. Yeah, yeah, probably start listening, folks, more so we can. Do that. <laughs> It'd be much appreciated. We know this podcast isn't going to pay for a trip to Galaxy's Edge, but if it could contribute just a couple of dollars, it'll feel totally worth it. If it could buy me a blue milk, you know, that's all I'm asking for. <laughs> just me. Um, it's when, when you guys, we pitched this idea a couple of weeks ago, and we were like, oh, I don't know if that's maybe the smartest idea, because it's how many food scenes are there in Star Wars. And then we started naming them, and there was like a lot off of the top of our heads. Mm-hmm. Off the top of your guys' heads, do you have... Your favorite food scene in Star Wars? The Bloodles from Andor. That guy, oh, I didn't even think about that. That Imperial guy. Yeah. Um, not Imperial. The Corpo guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget where he was because he wasn't on Ferrix at the time. But in Cyril Karn's whatever division, yeah. he was just eating some blue noodles. And it always struck me as kind of odd and fun. Food is That's blue. all I want from like, lore stuff in Star Wars to just be pretty regular. But just that Star Wars twist on it and just making it blue works <laughs> star wars food is blue and it reminds me of like the early 2000s when they made like butter blue and ketchup purple do you guys remember those yeah that was a fun trend so for a while. i gross, forget why though. they did that probably because they're just like it's not <laughs> we need something to be happy after 9 11 like i feel like it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's that Maybe. small <laughs> it was, no it was, that was like a common promotional for like movies and stuff there was green hershey's syrup was that for shrek probably. i think it was just out there for a couple years though like i don't think I thought a it was a promotion of... for something. I don't know. But I remember green Hershey's syrup specifically because I would make chocolate milk with that Hershey's syrup and it made my poop look weird. <laughs> I thought you were going to see the chocolate milk look green. I was like, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. But <laughs> It did that too. That, but that, took that, a funny... that was expected though. Yeah. Yeah. Even as a child, that wasn't uh, as shocking as the other. That took a really funny turn. Max, do you have a scene? Not a specific of? scene, but more of an existential question because I'm curious about when they eat in Star Wars like... Like, here on Earth, right? Like, we eat animals, but, like, those animals aren't sentient beings. Yeah. And I just wonder if they ever, like, if some planets eat things that are a little more sentient. sentient. <laughs> and, like, that the cannibalism question, I guess, that that kind of draws into question. So the one You're that speaking I'm my language of, now, Maxwell. <laughs> the one that I'm thinking of is uh, Grogu, when uh, the second episode of Mandalorian season yes. two, when he's eating the fish lady's children. Yes. Like that's, they were unfertilized eggs. It, they were not children yet. Uh, were they unfertilized? Do yeah, we know that? Isn't that why she had to get them to her husband to fertilize them? I guess that's true. I thought that was the plot. I'm pretty sure they were unfertilized. I, I guess that makes sense. I don't remember that being specifically explained because I remember all the memes right after that episode talking about how like they tried playing it off as like a cute joke. Like, oh, Grogu's eating the eggs. And then people were like, no, that's actually messed up. Yeah. <laughs> but what if those? What if they weren't fertilized, though? Would Grogu still eat them? Like, what does he know? I think he definitely would. I think he definitely would also. Yeah. He eats frogs. Yeah, that's well, messed up. Frogs aren't sentient. The frogs aren't sentient. But there's a couple more examples, like Quacky and Monkey Lizards. Are they sentient or no? Does Salacious B. Crumb, like... He's, he's like, laughing at jokes. I'm, yeah. I think... He I'm seems to be sure. aware. Yes. He seems to be aware. And there is a shot in Mandalorian that, where you see a Quacky and Monkey Lizard like being roasted over a fire. That being yeah. said, I'm pretty sure my dogs laugh at my jokes too. So maybe it's just <laughs> one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> I like how proud of your Jabba just has him trained really well. Yeah, he just gets the vibe, you know. Yeah. Dogs can be like that. I think it's pretty they good. They pick price. up on moves, moves, moves. <laughs> they pick up on the mood. Just say vibe. Cut that. Make that vibe. better. No, I don't want to say vibe. I, I said mood, and Matt'll cut it in. 
Um, that's so funny. <laughs> I think um, it, maybe it is more like the animal kingdom in the fact that it's like carnival, like you know, lions eating whatever is walking, right? It's just maybe more of that world where it's like, yeah, it's just like whatever you can get. Versus if there's out of a structure thing, because that's the thing too. We you know we talk about intricacies a lot, but realistically, if you're going from planet to planet, there's not going to have the same the same food, let alone the same species on things. Like mm-hmm. that's insane. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, if some cultures just eat sentient beings, and then if you went to like a more civilized planet, and they were just like a quote unquote more civilized planet, because you walk in, and then suddenly it's like, oh, we don't serve your kind. Yeah, and it's like, what do you mean? And it's like, well. Those those quacky monkey lizards are like aware they're sentient. We don't serve that. It's like when uh, you you know only Canada assumes serves poutine. No one else is allowed to serve poutine, <laughs> except <laughs> that one thing. that one restaurant in Cincinnati. Uh, yeah, poutine is delicious though. <laughs> um, I don't know. Why I couldn't think of any other. That's how like Northeast Ohio like. I don't know European white. I am. Is that I couldn't think of more <laughs> exotic food than poutine. <laughs> from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, to top it off, going off, weirdly off the cannibalism uh, avenue, which I feel like you know our, our podcast tends to do, is what I think about, which we talked a little bit about maybe in a couple weeks ago's episodes, or maybe it was just off pod and us uh, just talking normally, but the in, in the Bright Tree Village in Return of the Jedi, they're going to cook Han and everyone yeah, that's another yes. good example cannibalism <laughs> yes that's, yeah that's, definitely sentient beings that's not cannibalism cannibalism is your own species that's true you could eat other sentient species and it's not cannibalism it's but here on earth it would be because humans are just the only, only sentient, sentient one that's interesting Ooh. i guess that I being said well, i would co- sort of consider what? it cannibalism if like humans ate twilex so yeah so oh, like so humanoid well so humanoid but would the definition of cannibalism then be different if in the star wars universe I think it would. I think, I think it, it would, would be have too. to be, yeah. Because I would not consider it cannibalism for the Ewoks to eat humans or vice versa. Just kind of uncool. Uh, they're both like, sentient beings. They're both oh, sentient yeah. beings, so it's not okay, but it's not cannibalism. <laughs> There's got to be another word. <laughs> I don't know if there would be. That seems like cannibalism. You think cannibalism, the the qualifying factor is the sentience and not the same speciesness? I don't think it's ever been thought about before because I'm sure we're the only right, people here, in the I'm, world. How about, how about this? this? How about this? In um, oh, what's that movie about Facebook? The the Social Network. Yeah. The cannibalism um, scandal because the guy fed chicken to a chicken and they said that's cannibalism, but chickens aren't sentient. It's because they're the same species. Which is Man. what I would say cannibalism is. If you feed fish to a fish, I think that's cannibalism, even though the fish don't know. I have not seen The Social Network in like 15 years, oh, yeah. so Matthew, I need you to chir- chir- type. Chir- <laughs> it's, it's a, so moves chirp, and chirping. <laughs> chirping here. It's a pretty small Chiming. sub sub arc, but I think that, this is... it, it does come up, and I think that's what makes what cannibalism cannibalism, is that it has to be the same species, well, eating the same species. chicken to like a cow, I don't think that would be that bad. No, because they're not the same species. Why did I say two non-carnivorous animals? Because that <laughs> happens all the time. Because you're thinking that Jim Gaffigan joke, right? We were thinking, let's put a pig on a cow. I think I'm, it's a Jim Gaffigan. I'm actually thinking joke. of the Dimitri Martin joke, where he was like, "Pets are animals that we just don't think are delicious." <laughs> yes. It's like, all right, these we will kill and cook and eat, and these we will give sweaters and funny names and live with us. <laughs> also, that Dimitri Martin joke is hilarious. Anyway, we can get off the cannibalistic talk, but. No, I'm not, really not confident. Quick enough. I'm really confident that I'm right about this. It's no, got to be the same species. Not, the Ewoks are not cannibals. I don't mean about you. No, not about this debate. I just am talking about the Bright Tree Village specifically. I still think that's cannibalism. But either way, they're going to no eat. Way. They're going to. I'm either. googling the dictionary definition. I don't have my phone. Well, I think that, that that's the thing. I think it would. <laughs> I think the definition would be different in the Star Wars galaxy, potentially. What? Just make a new word then. That's what I was saying. That we need a new word I'm for sure. eating sentient species that's not cannibalistic. But either way, we just don't have a word for that because it's never come up in our galaxy. That is true. But either way, that's insane. That's what that's what they're gonna go do. Yeah, avoiding <laughs> the semantics of it all. That is pretty messed up. <laughs> yeah. We got there, folks. We got there. Uh, that's yeah. Anyway, that's what I think about when I think of like the food in Star Wars. Is like that was the potential. Mm-hmm. But anyway, happy you Thanksgiving, think, everybody. Do you think they ate the stormtroopers that they're playing probably. drums on their helmets at the end? I, that's pro- that's, or they just took the helmets and left the bodies? One that's of those, also kind of messed up. Probably one of those weird things where they... It's really dark, like at the end of Return. Everyone's hanging out, being happy. You know, we, we fade away from them all together. Luke, Leia, Han, Chewie, 3PO, R2. 
and there's just like actually behind like the door behind them there's just a stack of bodies they're gonna eat <laughs> over the next like couple of months it's like I wonder if that's a story element that was left over from when the Ewoks were originally supposed to be Wookiees in like the first draft. Yeah. And because Wookiees would eat people. I and mean, maybe that just never got changed. And Richard Marquand was like, George, even though the Wookiees are now like two feet tall, they're still going to eat Luke and Han. He was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know uh, Richard Marquand died like four years after Return of the Jedi? Oh, serious? Yeah. I just, that's too bad. I just found that out. I did not he know. He died that. when he was like 48, 49 years old only. How did he die? Uh, s- stroke. Oh, man. That's a bummer. I know. Isn't that? I did not know that, though. I was just like, oh, it's crazy. So the Ewoks were going to... <laughs> sorry. Going back. <laughs> the fact that, like, oh, a, a man died. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this was almost 40 years ago. Um, R.I.P. Richard. Moving on to non-cannibalistic talk. We'll see how actually how long this goes, but... Um, man, <laughs> this is not the first on my list. Is the roasted pork scene? <laughs> so I guess it's kind of. Right, well, well, that's no, a good question. Are pork sentient? I don't think they're sentient. No, no. no. Oh, but that they one act could like just cats, re- though. That, you know, cats aren't sentient. <sighs> I guess what's the def? I don't know. But they, like, they, they, I don't know. It's I guess that's like chickens can even know. This is a bad episode to have my phone on the other side of the room because I really got to just look up what sentient is, what cannibalism <laughs> is. This all makes so much sense. Well, in to my be mind, fair, and I feel like you guys are just not getting it. Well, to be fair, that's not. This is the spooky, scary for 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 me now. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah yeah it is but either way that's not the point of the whole episode right it's food it's thanksgiving time yeah it's november let's um let's talk about that scene though where chewie is about to eat the pork because a lot of people didn't like that scene afterwards they were like oh that was silly like i don't know like a lot of people didn't like it i think there's i thought that was a natural funny there's a lot of parts in the last jedi that people say it was supposed to be funny and it wasn't and i don't agree but i understand uh, like, That's putting um, on the spot, but I'm genuinely interested. Poe da- po Dameron about your mother joke. To, um, yeah, um, that is one Hux. of those jokes that aren't going to age, isn't going to age well because it feels like a leftover, like your mama joke from like 2004, yeah. to a degree. But I don't think it's that bad. The pork joke is also really funny. It's a funny moment. It's a funny beat. Chewie is like, I don't know, I he, that he has to be hungry and all the time. I feel like he, which is something funny that we never really focus on. Of not us specifically, but like. Star Wars, I feel like he just has to eat, like, a bunch of food. Like, he has to have, like, a Michael Phelps, yeah, it, like, level. Just his, like, physical caloric intake. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that's a funny beat that they've never, like, explored or anything, which is, like, kind of odd, I feel like, because yeah, how I'd many be, opportunities are there to do I'd that? I'd be interested to see that. It's Solo, they, like, perfect example, you know? It's your done there. They take a uh, well, cut of pay. cut the movie a little bit short. <laughs> <laughs> when they threw Han in the pit, if, if he just ate him. He actually, well, not ex- that exact moment. <laughs> That's true. the closest they, said, they got to mentioning it, though. They said that he, he hadn't been fed in days at that point, so at least he can store his calories for days. So that's, <laughs> that's good. True, Maybe he can make it for a while without taking too much in. Yeah. He's so also not, I mean, he's obviously like a Wookiee, but like yeah. he was played by Peter Mayhew. Like Peter Mayhew didn't go around having to eat 6,000 calories a day just to survive. Like, he's not that big. <laughs> he's pretty big, though. I mean, did he not? I wouldn't be surprised if he had a bigger diet than most. A, a bigger diet than most, but, like, I have a bigger diet than most, <laughs> and I'm just kind of <laughs> overweight. I don't think we're... Like, if you want to have this conversation, let's talk about Jabba the Hutt or a Rancor or something. Like The Rancor was another one that I was going to bring up. Uh, because they... they f- how often do they feed the Rancor? I mean, how often does Jabba... Well, how often kill someone, and how often do other people hang out around there? Well, Can you imagine hanging out at Jabba's palace and being like, "Oh, it's feeding time," and being like, "Oh crap, I hope he doesn't feed me." Do you think the Rancor eats exclusively people? There's got to be some sort what of chow. What else would he eat? I don't know. The same thing anyone eats. Why does it have to be people? I also just feel like food. he just happens to be able to also eat people. It's like how often does he feed him, or how often should he feed him? Because I feel like that's a very different conversation. Yeah, do you want him always hungry? What's you the probably want him always hungry? Luke, help me out here. What's the name of the Rancor's um, Malakili? Malakili. I believe so. Uh, that doesn't even sound familiar. I thought I would have recognized it if I heard it. Regardless, he was very uh, distraught when the Rancor died. So I he assume he so takes sad. good care of the Rancor. I think the Rancor yeah. was fed an appropriate amount. So was he, though, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's just, one chubby guy without a shirt on in all of Star Wars, and Matt has to call him out. <laughs> no. It's not just that he's chubby and without a shirt on. It's that he's the only chubby guy in Star Wars, and he's also the only guy without a shirt. It's just, it's just kind of a sad a double bad combo. Guy. He's not a bad guy. He's, oh my god, yeah, he's an animal lover. He's, yeah. Sure, but he's gonna have the Rancor eat Luke Skywalker. But that's what the Rancors eat. It's not. It's not what the Rancors <laughs> eat. It's what they could eat. Yes, I don't think it's like that's their diet. Hundred. Do you think Dini Trejo is just as bad a guy? No, because he a good trains question. Rancors. But I don't know if he gives. What is the difference between Danny Trejo and Malakili? Then we've never seen Danny Trejo. 
purposely trap somebody with a... Jabba purposely s- trapped him. Malakili was just uh, taking care of the Rancor. Yeah, but he has to be in Jabba's pocket because he's in his palace. Well, he's probably in Jabba's pocket, yeah, but, you know... He lives victim there. Of circumstance, it's just his job. I guess Don't that's... bring this back to serial card. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly where you're going. Anything else for the Porgs? Uh, no, not for the Porgs. All right, moving on to Jabba's to, to Jabba's frog bites in uh, Return of the Jedi. We're now we're just talking about Jabba's palace and stuff too. When he goes into that weird jar and just slurps down a frog, yeah. That doesn't bother me, though. That's like just, no, it doesn't bother just, me. That's we're like equivalent to eating chicken, I think, right? <laughs> well, to be fair, we're just talking about these scenes specifically, not if they bother us or not. <laughs> no, for me, it's pretty much if it bothers me. There's a lot of eating that bothers me. Like well, when, when uh, not to jump ahead, because I'm sure it's on your list, no, but when Luke, when Luke milks that sea creature for the green milk. Well, let's get into this. That's not cannibalistic or anything, no. but it still bothers so me. So let's get into green milk versus blue milk, right? And so like green, blue milk, we, you know, we all saw when we were, we were kids and, um, you know, in the movie, <laughs> not in real life, and... Um, now I'm wondering like why my parents never just put food coloring in milk to make me drink milk when I was younger. <laughs> if only they knew. do that all the time. Yeah. Um, but I think um, uh, in that scene, you're it gives that el- extra element. Like you said, the blue noodles, right? It's like one of those things that gives that extra element to you really wanting to be in that universe and be like, oh, that is different. That is weird. It's something that we haven't seen before. And so it's like this mysterious thing. And I think people are upset by the Last Jedi because it like breaks that barrier. But it's like we all know that like milk normally comes from cows and also that's no one thing. wants to see how the sausage gets made true <laughs> with that being said i also don't think that's actual milk in a new hope like i would i agree like, i've yes. always thought that no it's absolutely milk no. <laughs> what, luke skywalker luke skywalker gives big milk vibes he definitely <laughs> does true. and he's, he's a 19 year old who drinks milk he's a two percenter for sure <laughs> if not full but i don't think full. i don't think that's what they're serving in that specific scene like we all call it blue milk but realistically i feel like it has to be more of akin to what's at galaxy's edge if not realistically more like a gatorade kool-aid whatever something that actually gives you electrolytes specifically because they're moisture farmers they're in the sun all day so i assume it's like more of a an electrolyte drink it looked creamy Oh my god! It looked like if, no, you, it didn't. if you took a sip of it, you'd have a mustache. They <laughs> it looked creamy because the the glass the the glassware was smoky. It was that was that was coated. I think that's. So you think the, it's just completely different than the green milk that Luke was drinking in the Last Jedi? Yes, I think that is. You I think do Luke think it's different. Green milk in the Last Jedi and Gatorade in A New Hope. I, I said that kind of condescendingly, but I actually agree. <laughs> I don't. I think Luke I is a big like, milk guy. I, I think that it was green milk in The Last Jedi and in A New Hope, because they're moisture farmers, so they had to have created this drink somehow. And you can't just create milk unless you squeeze it from an animal. And animals right, are true. very rare on Tatooine. So it had to have been something that they created yeah. more akin to Gatorade than it is to milk. Yeah, I think so too. Like I said, it makes more sense too, I think. But I mean, yes, Luke does. Luke Skywalker, not Taylor, gives milk energy. Yes, I agree. With if that. you were milk, what percentage would you be? If I was the milk, if you were the milk, back to you too. I, I like to think skim, but I know it'd be whole. Two <laughs> percent to whole, yeah, for me as well. I think I'd be oat. Oat. <laughs> I love oat milk. Just the one that everyone rolls their eyes when they see. That's no, how you it's feel. good. You know it's an option, but no one likes it. It's delicious. <laughs> the milk me... equivalent of a deep sigh. The you know what's funny. Everyone... I... Sorry, you go on. I was just gonna say everyone knows that friend that you had as a uh, as a kid that would come over to your house and would ask for milk. <laughs> That's Luke Skywalker. That's just the vibes <laughs> that he gets. Yeah, get off the Luke, Luke Skywalker. Skywalker is a big milk guy. I you know I do agree with that. I was just gonna say for Halloween. <laughs> so speaking of food, I love Frankenberry, the monster cereal. Hey, I'm not familiar. Really? Oh man, I wish it was Halloween. Uh, it's like I, for, it's, it just reminds me of being a kid. It's like a strawberry cereal. It's delicious, but it's so funny. Where like I try to have a pretty healthy diet and eat the same things uh, for breakfast every day that are healthier. Um, and I so, believe a healthy diet is supposed to be varied. So maybe that we can talk about that off the top. <laughs> we can talk about your health <laughs> issues later. <laughs> and so, and so it's been funny this year. Like I like audibly laughed at myself when I'm like pouring myself some frankenberry which is like a children's cereal like a sugary children's cereal but like also having it with like low fat almond milk or something <laughs> and it was just like who am i what am i doing with like i should just do the full thing if i'm gonna do it there's no shame in that yeah. everyone has a guilty pleasure like that for me it is i have these cups these small cups that i just fill to the brim with uh, <laughs> <laughs> with 
uh, Chips Ahoy cookies. Yeah. And then I just fill the cup with milk and I just mash it together and eat it like a little, mm. like a little stew. How long have you been doing that for? I've never seen. Ever you since that. I was a kid. I remember That's that crazy. when we were kids. Yeah. <laughs> it was funky. <laughs> funky? No, it was delicious. Have you done it recently? It's yummy. Yeah, I but it's just it's a funky just thing to v- witness. Cookies and milk. It's Luke's, delicious. <laughs> Luke's having a sleepover and he's like, "What the hell's up with your weird ass older brother?" He <laughs> was I the weird milk kid? <laughs> Did I go over friends' houses and ask for milk? <laughs> oh Man, no, you probably discovered. did. All right, moving on. Oh yeah, blue milk and yeah, the the last Jedi also with the green milk. I think it's interesting. I think Ryan Johnson really wanted to do something to show you how something is made. I guess right. I think that was like obviously a very purposeful thing, and I feel like I really like mm-hmm. that scene. I think it's hilarious, and I like what it means for like Luke Car- Luke Skywalker and what he's doing on this planet to survive. I think the part that he, Ryan Johnson might have gone too far, which is what people will get bothered, because they just say that they get bothered with the green milk. But it's not the green milk. It's the sound that the animal makes. <laughs> when it that, looks that at Ray, of, like, yeah, you're look, right. You that, see this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, like audible that. pleasure or maybe shock. I don't know what it is, but it, that's the part that makes everyone uncomfortable. I mean, yeah. it's like leaning back. It's like sitting down. It's not laying or anything. It's definitely oh, yeah. not in a normal position. I think he's he was got, waiting for he's Luke. He's got like flippers, I think, yeah, instead of arms. But he could have smacked Luke away if he didn't want him to do that. But <laughs> moving on from... Blue Milk. We also love our sponsors. Uh, moving on from... <laughs> actually, I was, I was listening to the podcast today and it scared the shit out of me because the ads ran and we just started playing. And I was about to say a sentence and it was all like, shop at Mark's! And it was like, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was talking there! <laughs> yeah, literally. I was just like, never been so interested in my, going back to myself. Um, Mark's advertises? Yes, apparently. Well, probably because they know I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I think the only one I know of still in existence is... <laughs> Well, we're, it's not in Parma, but it's up yeah. There, oh yeah. yeah, there's well, there's a multiple in Parma, but there's also one right by my house in Westerville. There's multiple Parma or multiple marks in Parma. Oh yeah, baby, including the one I got hit by a car in the, I the parking lot. That. I hated it for years. I'm like this place sucks, and also I get hit by a car here. I'm not going there. <laughs> anyway, moving on from the blue milk and the green milk is the what I would call Yoda's oatmeal. <laughs> I know it's not oatmeal, but it's in Return of the Jedi. When right before, I think it's right before Yoda dies. Um, in no, I think he makes an it. Empire. He makes it an empire. It is an empire. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I, I was as I was saying that sense, I was like, I don't think that's the, the turn of events when he goes and dies. Then after he eats the it, meal, but because he's feeding it to Luke when he's still a crazy kook before he reveals himself to be Yoda, which is another mm-hmm. layer of whether or not you'd eat it. As I'm Luke. thinking of the specific scene where Luke is pouring it out, pouring it out for himself over the open fire. I think that, that might, is in return. Is that, okay, that is a return. Yeah. Then okay. So he eats it twice? I think so. I'm pretty sure it's Return. I'm going to say it's Return. It's when uh, they're in his hut, and there's the fire going, and Luke takes uh, out the, what I again, what I would call oatmeal, realistically, probably not oatmeal. Um, Space oatmeal. Yeah, and to me, uh, it's not what he's eating. Presumably, it's gross. Actually, there is a specific thing I think it's called. Um, oh, it's uh, root leaf stew. Mm-hmm. Um, is what he's making, and it's things that he forged, forged from on Dagobah. And so presumably it doesn't taste good, because that is not a great looking planet to eat from, I'd say. Yeah, it sounds disgusting as well. Root leaf. <laughs> yeah. Stew? <Ugh. laughs> um, that sounds like the best option, actually. I would imagine it would be mostly bugs if it wasn't roots and leaves. That's true. So you but, got that going for so you, Luke. So it's definitely not oatmeal. But for some reason, that whole vibe and setting I have always really liked. And I was like, that seems like something I'd like to eat in that setting. Yeah, it's like it about feels cooking a meal over an open fire just makes it seem better. It does. And it feels like storybooky almost a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, which is fun. And so I think uh, th- that's what I always think about that scene too specifically because it looks so cozy in that house. And as, as I said a couple weeks ago, when the winter starts hitting, I'm just like, I want to watch Star Wars. Just cozy up. <laughs> get, a, get a heated blanket going. Get some, get some blanket. half maple sugar, half apple cinnamon going. What? Oatmeal? Oh, the two best oatmeal yes. flavors. I was just like, by themselves? But <laughs> No, oatmeal. <laughs> okay, yes, oatmeal. That sounds great. I want to get soup belly. It's like Pavlov's <laughs> dog. Like You never really realize why, but every time you watch uh, Return of the Jedi, you're just like, I want oatmeal. I have oatmeal every morning. Uh, that's, that's usually what I eat, besides Frankenberry during October. <laughs> you um, eat for an entire month? <laughs> <laughs> that's not all I eat, but <laughs> I sneak it here and there. Um, just like I only drink soda when we... We record this podcast. This is a special occasion. Yeah, though. yeah, it but it, but when we do the special occasion, like sometimes twice a week, it's, it's not like <laughs> it's really hard to justify sometimes, you know. Um, 
another scene I was thinking was of the biggest one. One of the biggest ones is the portion bread that Ray gets in Force Awakens. Yes, that it's such a cool effect to see, and the fact that Ray lives like that and has to get things portioned out by scavenging is an interesting trait for her, and obviously it gives her the 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 need in order to scavenge to be a good scavenger so she can get whatever she wants. And then obviously it's a great character beat when she refuses the 164 portions. 160? 60 portions. I forget. Yeah, I thought it was... Either way, just say it's 60 portions. Either way, she that's a lot for her, right? Because she only gets mm-hmm. like three, one quarter portion. Yeah, I would like to talk about the um, inflation market on Jakku because we're currently in a period of massive inflation here in our world and it's not that significant seemingly in comparison to Jakku because she brought multiple pieces and Unkar Plot says... What you've brought me is worth one quarter portion, and last week they were a half portion each. That is assuming that she brought two pieces, which it was well over two. It was like three, four, five, six, seven, I forget how many. But that's, if it was just two, that is a Mm -hmm. 25% reduction from week to week. She is screwed if she stays there. Those people are doomed. I don't know if it's inflation more or less that Unkar plot is just being a dick. Is my read of that situation. What's the difference? Because money's made up anyway. <laughs> I guess, especially in that galaxy. It's always just someone being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Ever since we got off that gold standard. <laughs> That's, I, but I think that is Umkar Plot being a dick. But like, but that mush, that meal does not look good. The bread? The portion bread, yeah. Oh, I didn't think it looked that bad. I was really surprised at how I good always it think looks. it looks like matzo. I'm like, ooh, I can make a little soup with that. Oh. Mm-hmm. You turned me. You got me. <laughs> got you with the matzo ball soup. <laughs> got me with the matzo. I do love matzo ball soup. I I don't know if I would eat the portion bread though. I mean, I would if I was on Jakku. There's slim pickings there. Yeah, if I was on Jakku, I think I would. But like, also part of me like wants to have maybe like <laughs> now say maybe for Thanksgiving, maybe next Thanksgiving we should make some Star Wars esque food and see what that's like. Like portion bread, it's basically just bread, but it's probably with some green food dye in it or something. But Oh my gosh, we've talked about this before, baking bread for the next show that comes out every yeah. week. <laughs> Such a hassle. Maybe we should just do it for the first episode. Just do portion bread. Only right. one quarter portion, though. Or just matzo ball soup. If we do Damn quarter it. portions a week, we could probably make it last for all of Skeleton Crew's runtime. <laughs> Maybe. It would definitely go stale and moldy during that time. <laughs> so never mind. <laughs> Uh, another scene I think of when I think of the food in Star Wars is the very simple is the apples the apple scene in Phantom Menace when Jar Jar's eating them from the table with his tongue. That's a good one. Those how, are just regular apples. And how the hell do they get them there? Yeah, that's a heavy import. That's a heavy mm-hmm. import, right? Like it's a true. I guess just importing, yeah. Because and it is a place. I guess where actually no, I just kind of said that as a joke, but then you you did kind of just nail on the head. I feel like that is a place that a trade comes in and out of a lot, whether legally or illegally. If you're going to do it illegally, why bother with apples? <laughs> I have to imagine hey, that's a legal trade. You ever have a good honey crisp? I don't know, man. Like, it's worth it. <laughs> um, Charger almost lost his tongue over it. That is one of those funny, those, that's one of those scenes. Have you seen the behind the scenes uh, videos of those, of that scene specifically? I know when, it goes a lot longer in deleted scenes. Well, it's just funny because just like seeing, um, uh, oh my God, I can't think of his name. Zaboba? No, um, Jar Jar. Uh, yes, but I'm at best. Yes, I'm at best. Thank you. Um, wow, <laughs> what? That was crazy. <laughs> then I got him yeah. <laughs> instantly. It was weird. Wait, he's just sitting there in like a blue screen suit, and he's got like the Jar Jar like eyes on his head, mm-hmm. so that they can like interact, like meet his eye line. It's just like so funny to see that being filmed. Yeah, he's got the like the black visor around his <laughs> eyes, so they don't accidentally look at him. Yeah, yeah. it's so awkward. What, what's what are those glasses called? Pit vipers. I have no idea. Is that what they're called? I have no idea. Oh, you should know. Dan has a pair of them. I have no idea. I don't know. I think I'm pretty sure they're called pit vipers. But Interesting. Yeah, that's what I always think of whenever I see those deleted scenes. That's cool. Um. <laughs> Another food from The Phantom Menace that I wanted to mention when we were talking about Jabba, because Jabba takes one of those frogs in The Phantom Menace, bites its head off, and then spits it at the gong to start the pod race. That's a lot darker than just eating a frog. <laughs> that that's is, vicious. That is a lot darker than eating a frog. That's pretty brutal, actually. It's like it's one of those things in Star Wars you just you just see. And that's why I love doing this podcast, to be honest. Because even though this is like a like a fun, stupid episode that we're talking about Star Wars food, it's like, oh yeah, like in that moment, I've never really thought about that. But that it's kind of dark. It's just mm-hmm. like, yeah, this life means nothing to me. <laughs> I will spit its head towards a gong. That's power right there. My God. Yeah, real status move. It is. Um, Could be the move. And the. Uh, Do you follow? You know what I'm talking about. What'd you say? Could be the move. No idea it's what like that a, is. No. I don't know if it's like a channel or just like a trend on TikTok or something when people talk about like power plays like that. Like I don't know. Could be the move. 
Mm. Using, I'm going to start using a toothpick. Could be the move. Mm, must be a young person slang thing know. going over my head. As you just I'm met, very, you said Riz like last <laughs> week. I did. I'm very in tune with the with the kids nowadays, as just demonstrated by my knowledge of Pit Vipers. I just Googled it to make sure I wasn't crazy. It is called Pit Vipers. It's like the sunglasses that Riff Raff wears. I was just going to mention the Riff Raff ones. Yes, my dad has those too. <laughs> Your dad does have a pair, yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, going on from Phantom Menace to Attack of the Clones. Uh, obviously, the pear scene. Yes. Very iconic food scene in Star so Wars. So weird. And they eat so much fruit in the prequel trilogy, I feel like, specifically. Fruit it's a healthier is era. Everywhere. It's a healthier era, yeah. The CGI in that scene bothers me because it's, it's obviously not perfect because it's 2002. Yeah. But you can tell when Anakin floats the pear slice over to Padme and she puts it on her fork that it's not really there. Yes. But then she doesn't really sell you taking the fake bite. <laughs> no, you she You can tell she's not eating also. <laughs> and when Anakin's slicing the pear, like, they could have meld it or whatever it's called um mesh two scenes together like a real and a cg scene where he does cut a real pair instead of just pretending to cut nothing with air and mime that activity I mean, probably look, the whole scene looks pretty hokey they probably did and then they were like the cg is clearly not the same pair i think we just got to cg the whole thing <laughs> i cannot be. believe that i'm living in a world where a couple weeks ago mm, i don't Months ago? Mon- no. In a couple weeks from now, Luke Taylor, well, I don't know when it was, when you were talking about uh, how you like something. Oh, no, there's a lightsaber battle. There's a lightsaber battle. And, and how you week. like something that is older because it's because it's, you have a core memory for it. And then now you're also suggesting combining CG and practical. Not that pairs are practical. I don't know. It's not Sometimes it, ju- it makes more sense. I'm not saying to do that entire scene practical. I don't want to see George you... Lucas with a fishing pole taking the pair <laughs> you, I was going to say that because so mouth funny. to Padme's mouth. There's a difference between making a practical animatronic creature that doesn't exist versus a pear, <laughs> exactly. which costs less than a dollar. If Just you're going to CG get one. it, why don't you make a space fruit? Why why is it just a pear? All I'm saying is that you have the first time we see a Jorgen fruit. Yeah, exactly. You have an arc in this show so far, though. That's all I'm <laughs> saying. I'm it's... excited for what we do with season two. <laughs> like, we have seasons or something. All of our and fans or, are like, this Luke guy, he, he's really grown over the course of the show. And or season two is going to be 100% practical effects, and then I'm going to be fully on board. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to start dressing like me? <laughs> Um, and the the last one I have is the uh, uh, Colo Claw meat and Solo, which just looks like caviar with a like an over easy egg on top of it. When is that? It is when oh my god I'm forgetting literally everyone's name now. I did not Dryden Voss. <laughs> Thank you. When they go to Dryden Voss, <laughs> yes. <laughs> when they go to Dryden Voss and he offers it to them. Um, I can't picture it. I, it and then we just rewatched Solo. I, it um, looks like. It literally looks like it takes it's two seconds, but he says it's a delicacy. Um, mm, I believe him. He's a man of status, also. He is indeed. Um, but it, to me, it looks kind of gross. Like it, it looks like caviar, but like why put the egg on it? <laughs> like it's just the it's just the egg yolk. Yeah, that does look pretty. What gross. did you say that's called? <laughs> yeah, Matt just pulled it up. Colo claw meat does Cola not look Kwame. good. It's actually the Colo Kwame Royale because it's got the egg. <laughs> <laughs> Colo Claw Meat Royale. I love it. Um, any Honestly, anytime I'm anywhere and I see the word Royale, I will order that burger or something. Like, <laughs> You're a big fan of the egg? Yeah. Interesting. I, well, like I'm like at Steak and Shake, your favorite restaurant, Max. Oh, don't get me started on them. <laughs> the, Great we, food, but as an establishment, absolutely <laughs> terrible. They, yeah, it's the they principle. have burned me. I don't think you and I have talked about it either, Matt, but I also have an undying hatred for Steak and Shake. So really? It's, it's really good that we don't bring it up. What is it? We'll just leave it at that. It's awful. The food's awful. The service is awful. The business model. It's just, it's all bad. I don't want to talk about Starting. it. I'm, I'm fine with all those. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe except for the business model. It was just the one time they gave Max the wrong food and then just gave him a, a It wasn't free... just the wrong food. When they, when I told it to him and they tried to screw me, they were like, oh, I'm sorry. Hey, here's this coupon. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't really want the coupon, but like, I guess I'll take it because I'm passive aggressive. I don't make a big deal about things. And then I got home and I realized that that coupon was like only after I spend another fifty dollars and, and it expired the next day. I was like, you sons of bitches! Like it, you just swindled me. It was a pretty intense situation. I think where you bought food for like a bunch of people too. I forget why, but it was also like a twenty five minute drive. Which, man, this one time I went to Chick fil A and it was in high school and. Uh, it was a couple of buddies and I, and it was like later at night, it was probably like 10, 11, but we walk in and the lady that says, that, um, we're the only ones there, we walk into an empty restaurant, and she says, hey, is everyone here 17? 
And we said, yes, we actually are all 17. And she said, oh, you have to be 18 to dine here at this hour. <laughs> and sent us back in. It was That's the most she knew unfair. She said, is everyone here 18? You guys would just be like, yeah. She tricked you. That's a trick. She did. It is. Yes. <laughs> That's also I never forgive them. That's so funny. That's that's all I do. Like I haven't been back since. That's everyone here seventeen. Yeah, well you gotta be eighteen. Get the hell out. That's hilarious. She knew what she was doing. She clearly has done this a couple times. <laughs> she mm-hmm. is. Yeah. That's that's, funny. A, that's hilarious. Anyway, screw steak and shake. Dryden Voss's flagship. Back to cannibalistic eating people. Maybe that one guy uh, singing. Not the not the yes. girl singing with the, the with the mouth thing. Yeah, the head. Yeah. That is, he is basically a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> that is a sentient pickle, if you ask me. Yep. So you, you would, it would be uncool to eat that one. Correct. Most pickles are okay. Most pickles are okay. okay Until they start p- singing. Until they start, yeah, the pickle sings, you gotta put it down. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, those are the food scenes that I had. Does anybody have any, any, uh, any, oh my god, anybody else have any other scenes they can think of on the top of their head that want to discuss or anything? Not a different scene, but going back to that pair scene in Attack of the Clones, we yes. didn't talk about Obi or we didn't talk about Anakin's line when he said Obi Wan would be very grumpy if he found out about this. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he what? sure would be. Which is just like a funny word choice, like to be like, oh, he'd be grumpy. Like he wouldn't be displeased or like yeah. upset. He would be very grumpy. Grumpy is what you say about a toddler. <laughs> He's talking about his Jedi master. Yes, for, I think it for using the Force to cut a pair. <laughs> I mean, just imagine that conversation. Obi Wan would be like, "You did what?" There's a lot of verbiage in that movie where I. Th- think right it's trying to bridge the gap between anakin and revenge which is clearly older and anakin and phantom which is clearly obviously a different actor slash significantly younger and so i feel like they're they're trying to bridge that gap where the verbiage is using words like grumpy versus like pissed or angry or something so a grumpy is it clearly like that feels like a teenager with that being said i mean he gets married in that movie <laughs> so like it doesn't <laughs> it does a weird job of being like we need to try to bridge the gaps where the verbiage is pretty low but then he's going to get married by the end of this. And you're like, okay. And he has to, also has to show his maturity because the girl he's marrying is five years older than him. And he met her when he was nine. Yes. And it's... a very respectable senator of a very major planet. Yes. And she will not like him for most of the movie. <laughs> but for good reason. We'll make him extra creepy. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll say things like grumpy. Um, the last food item uh, that I would like to talk about is Luke's ration pack on Dagobah. Oh, yeah. That, like... Uh, chalky slim jim kind of thing yep. that yoda tries to eat mm-hmm. that looks pretty funky i don't really have that much to say about it but i just wanted to mention it yeah i feel like star wars food realistically has to be really hard to come by across planets so it's probably pretty i don't know you can probably travel with it pretty well probably doesn't taste great though i don't imagine i remember in the alphabet squadron trilogy i think it was the third book that alexander freed write those wrote those books and it's he's very famous or infamous depending on who you talk to that he put an excruciating amount of detail into those books. And yeah. for some people, it was just way too much detail, and they were super bored, like, listening to every single minute maneuver that the Starfighter pilots made, five of them in every battle. And I remember at one point, um, the X-Wing pilot does go on a long hyperspace trip, and there's a lot of detail that she, like, checked all of her subsystems and ate the ration pack, and it goes into detail for, like, a little while. Like, this part was pretty good. The next part was okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of detail. She gave a review of every single ration pack she ate. (laughs) She talked about it for a lot longer than you would think you would hear about it. It's it's like uh, George R. R. Martin's writing. It's like, wow, we really know everything about (laughs) this character now. Thank you. Um, So those are the the food scenes we're talking about. To move, so move on to like uh, a bit of a mini segment, I guess would be out of the ones we talked about. What food would you be interested in eating the most out of these? Presumably not including the pear or the apple. (laughs) Um, I was going to say I would love to be force-fed a pair. Force-fed a pair is... Well, he he could be force-fed. It It counts enough. I mean, force put it on my fork. She consensually accepted it. She stabbed it. Oh, that's interesting. I don't mean force as in forceful. I do mean forceful. In the Star Wars universe, (laughs) the force means something else than in our universe. I want to be fed via the force a pair. I just now understand what you're saying. I'm you're sorry. right. I do not yeah. want to be force-fed like, anything. As as Max, I saw the, the gears turning as you were trying to figure this out, and I was like, "Oh, he's not understanding what Luke is saying." Yeah, I was like, "That's a weird description of what happened." <laughs> Max, when the three of us gather, we're typically usually talking about Star Wars, and in that galaxy, there is this thing called the Force. <laughs> I'm usually just talking about food and Marvel for some reason. <laughs> you guys keep bringing up Star Wars. <laughs> he's like, "What is the idea?" 
of this podcast? Uh, I guess I would try the the blue milk. I have to know now if it's milk. I'm confident it is. But I would also have to try the blue milk. It's, yeah, it's, it's iconic. I wouldn't trust it's Max's review. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Gatorade, and you'll be honest. Matt. I will. I will be. <laughs> well, if he's trying it anyway, and you're not going to believe me. Then I'll try the green milk. Oh, that's just that's it's got to be straight out of the udder. <laughs> yeah, there it is. So, at, and then at Galaxy's Edge, we've all been there. What is, What do you think is the the best food that you've had there, as well? Like one item. I forget Drink most or of them, yeah. but I got to give it to the Ronto Wrap just because of the way you can order it on your phone and just pick it up, like on your way to and from wherever you're doing anything. I really liked. That I think you feature. can pick them up anything up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> most, most, the like the can't the it's not a cantina the restaurant it's like a whole restaurant you got to go in and you have like a plate this is like a it's a wrap you just take it on your way and the go restaurant br- browse I think the is shops so cool to, though too it's I love the little back area it's kind of hidden and the doors slide open mm-hmm. it's like a little secret area back there I distinctly remember being blown away by the food and how un like earthly it was like when they presented yes. the food it's like, i have no idea like yeah. what this food actually is that i'm eating yeah which was really cool and i really like that novelty aspect of it that said i recall not being blown away by its quality really yeah i mean there's obviously thing when you, well at that price point anything at a theme park with that being said within the theme park it's like well that's i think it's quality food still because like there's a few things that still blow me away at, at like theme parks food wise and it's like well that's like the corn dogs out in disneyland are like super unique and then i feel like uh even the corn dogs at like the simpsons uh in that in that uh section in uh in springfield and i but i, I also do love the the the, the veggie uh, ranch wrap i think it was delicious and i did not try that the 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 addition of like having th- like dragon fruit in the fruit it looks otherworldly, like you said, Max. It's like very specific, which is nice. But once again, overall, I'd go the blue milk. It's so I love slushies, and I don't know how to describe it, but it's like somewhere between a slushie and like I don't even I don't know. It's like thicker. It's like a melted Luigi, which is all <laughs> I want anyway. It's just melted Italian ice, and it just tastes like the color blue. It does taste very blue, but it's not blue raspberry. I've had that it's not blue exact raspberry. same thought. Where yes. I thought this tastes blue, but my whole life up until this point, I've associated blue with like candy blue. Yeah. It was it was very unique. I know, right? I loved it. But again, we'll get more into that over the 100th episode uh, coming up in six months. <laughs> more than that. Honestly. I mean, not too far off. Um, And then so, th- uh, yeah, Max is calculating his head. He's also being force fed in how many months? <laughs> and then, um, I don't think I'm looking forward to this trip. Uh, <laughs> and then, last, oh man, I really want to go. Anyway, um, and then lastly, it's the Thanksgiving episode, so I figured we could say something we're thankful for, Star Wars wise or not. Uh, I will say I'm thankful for the High Republic, not because it's just good stories that I really like, but it's something that we've, the Star Wars community as a whole has been vocally asking for for years to get unique stories without the skywalker um characters that have plot armor and you know they're constrained by the movies that's a unique story unique era unique characters uh i feel like that is not only just really good stories but it's distinctly what we were asking for and i'm thankful that they listened yeah maxwell I am thankful that the most recent HasLab project got funded. I am super excited for it, and I've been purposefully not looking it up. I got, like, the email and everything saying that, like, uh, you, you know, it was, um, like, the order has been placed and all that stuff, but I have no idea when it ships. And I'm very intentionally not looking it up because I don't want to know because I'm just very excited to be surprised one day once it arrives. But it was a, uh, a three, three-quarter inch... Um, uh, scale model of the uh, ghost ship from Rebels, and I am very, very excited for it. I'm excited for you to have that. It's going to be good. As soon as I get it, again, I don't know when it's going to be, but I'm going to text my uh, oldest brother uh, because uh, he, um, his son is a big Star Wars fan. Uh, his name is Malcolm, and he's like five years old, so he's going to be like the perfect age to play with this toy, and I'm very excited to have him over and play with it with me. Whoa, you're going to actually play with it, though? Toys are meant to be played with, Matthew. <sighs> Man, I don't know. You should have bought probably, two, man. I, I actually will not be opening up. There's uh, action figures that come with it on exclusive card backs, and I'm probably not going to be opening the action figures, but I will be playing with the ship. I have mixed feelings on that whole Toys Are Meant to Be Played With mantra because I agree. I do collect some toys in box. Mm-hmm. I have um, on my desk at home an Ayla Sakura in box that I haven't opened, not because I'm collecting her in the box. I just haven't opened her yet, and so I'm not opposed to opening her, opening it. 
But I let my son, who's one and a half, play with it in the box. And he just, you know, walks around and points to it. And I didn't think anything of it. Have not seen it since. Worried he threw it in the trash. (laughs) (laughs) So I wish I had opened that and played with it more now. (laughs) Aspen also has a lot of toys. I love opening things up. It's part of the experience, I think, is opening it up and being able to, like, yeah, mess around with it, try the different, like, heads on action figures and stuff. That being said, have you guys opened any of the Black Series toys um, that do not have the plastic packaging that are all cardboard and uh, paper? No, I don't think I have actually. Uh, just they're the, newer, and I around. think they're already pivoting off of that because everyone hates it so much. But yeah. it's just such a different experience because the toy is like wrapped up in um, like gift wrapping paper yeah. in a cardboard box. It feels like I'm opening up some uh, like a bag of cocaine. <laughs> 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 you just um, I do not like it at all. And the opening up the plastic is so much more fun because you get to like just make those little surgical cuts and then remove the yep. plastic from the box and then. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right there. You see it the whole time. There was Next. a huge backlash from the the fan base when that was announced because obviously people like the um, the clear plastic so that you can keep it in the box because a lot of collectors do collect in the box. Yep. And they're like, look, if you don't give me, what's it called? The screen or whatever. Mm-hmm. They're like, if you don't give me that screen, then like I'm literally just collecting a cardboard box. Like I do still want to see the action figure inside. Yes. It. And so like pretty unanimously everyone like hated that they did that and then they pretty quickly were able to walk it back because they wanted to like save on plastic and all that stuff so yeah. they were pretty quickly able to find a way to use recyclable plastic that's still eco-friendly or whatever you're yeah. action- i'm all, i'm sorry i'm all for yeah. saving the environment but got it what cost you know <laughs> <laughs> not at the cost of my star wars toys the uh the what's it called action figure the the one the hasbro one that you had um uh, was in the same, not a similar thing, but it was cardboard versus the the actual normal packaging. If you remember that, because if you want it to be, it'd be cool if it was an actual an actual black series box, but it wasn't. Which one was it? The the one of you, the one oh, of you uh, and Jason. The selfie series. Oh, yeah. I don't. I didn't remember that. I well, but that one I opened up right away though because of obvious reasons. That's yes. not one that you keep in the box. That's true. The we selfie should do, series, yeah, that was what it was called. Thank you. I feel like the selfie series probably has gotten better since then. Um, we should, we, do, we a, should do one every single year just to watch the progression. That, or I was just gonna say we should do a force for thought uh, selfie series. Is all. I would love one. Yeah, on me board. too. We should buy each other one. Christmas is right around the corner. So then that we, way we just celebrated Thanksgiving today. <laughs> it's true today, or tomorrow, depending on when this episode releases. True. We will celebrate tomorrow. Grab a round to rab, grab a blue milk. This is already more energy and excitement in this intro right now that I'm doing, which I should have done in the intro. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, I let it with a calamari joke. Anyway, I think that's it for this episode. I'm thankful for you guys, and I'm thankful for this podcast and for the people that are still able to talk Star Wars, which is very nice. Seems kind of like a cop out. I guess I'm thankful for those things too. No, no, no. You're not. <laughs> you bought yourself a $500 action figure. You should be thankful for that. Uh, before we leave, does anyone have any force for thought? I do. I was watching uh, deleted scenes on Disney Plus of the Star Wars movies, and I honestly should just stop because now it's just so apparent when I don't see the deleted scenes when I watch the actual movie. And the one that stuck out most that I can't believe they cut is from The Phantom Menace. It is when Qui-Gon and Anakin are leaving Tatooine, mm-hmm. and... Darth Maul tries to run Anakin over, and Anakin, you know, you get that scene where Qui-Gon turns around and says, Anakin, drop. But they're already in a dead sprint, and that is so bizarre. There's a deleted scene where Qui-Gon senses uh, Darth Maul coming, and he's like, okay, Anakin, we're in a hurry now. Someone's coming. We should run. And that scene needs to be there. There is no reason for them to be running without it. That makes so much more sense because hmm. I have always wondered the blind obedience that went into Anakin just immediately hitting the ground. Like, if someone told me to drop, that would not be my instinct. That too, yeah. Anakin knew that there was someone chasing them. It makes sense. And it was just like a, a cutaway scene where Qui-Gon like, looked off into the horizon and could sense something coming. And why you need that to establish running. They are in a dead sprint for absolutely no reason. Yeah. Man, that's that's interesting. There's ugh, Man, now I, I do want to watch deleted scenes, though. It is fun to watch deleted scenes and have them be slightly different mm-hmm. also from the movies. Uh, They're a good There's time. another deleted scene from... Attack of the Clones, where Jocasta New has more dialogue when she's talking to Obi Wan, and it's in between um, when she says, "Did you have a question, Master Kenobi?" Or uh, in between when she says, "Did you have a question, Master Kenobi?" And when she walks up to him, there's like a whole bunch of dialogue, and you can just really tell that the cutaway scene to when she says, "Did you have a question, Master Kenobi?" is 
inserted af- at the end of these deleted scenes, but without the deleted scenes, it, like the flow is now yeah. off, and hmm. now I can tell, and it's not. It's like one of those boxes that you can't close again. I was just going to notice yeah. it forever. They really didn't refine the writing once you go to the grumpy line in Attack of the Clones. <laughs> the whole Anakin being a slave thing is really glossed over. Like in Attack of the Clones, when he goes back to Watto, and Watto was like, hey, I got some people that owe me a lot of money if you could help me out. Like, I think you're misremembering the relationship you had with this boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. You're kind of lucky he's not killing you in cold blood right now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Although he did let him go home a little early some days. Oh, yeah, yes. At least that one time. That's true. <laughs> what a time. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. That's, Happy yeah, Thanksgiving. that's a good sign-off. <laughs> See you, Sammy.